Yes. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> this is it. Uh, recently in the press, there's been confirmed about the CIA support for abstract expressionism in New York and uh, CIA connections with um, MoMA. Right, yes. I've read about that, yeah. Yeah, do you, does well, that jive with your memory or do you have any information about, you know, f back in the 50s and the 60s of, about those connections? Did you have any idea that the CIA was backing abstract expressionism? Well, I think that's being a, a pretty broad term because uh, they certainly weren't backing it all or all of the artists, but there were some artists who were cooperating with them and some innocently were being used because they didn't realize that. I think that's very true, but mm -hmm. some who probably were active um, collaborators. I do know that uh, Will Morehouse, Bill Morehouse, who taught up here at... Uh, yeah, he was uh, my teacher. Oh, really? Well, yeah. Bill told a story about how when he was shipping out, well, he got a job, he and his wife, what was he was married, that wonderful little woman who had an Indian name, whatever. Oh. Anyway, they went. They got a nice summer job working on a kind of a cr early cruise ship mm -hmm. to be uh, you know, an artist in residence or something really? like that. And I think she was the dancer, whatever. They, was, they were a great couple, good looking and all that stuff, you know. So mm -hmm. off they go. Thanks for coming, pal. Oh, yes. Yeah, and... Uh, uh, Morehouse, Bill Morehouse, told that story about how they asked him, some they called him and asked him to come to this office in San Francisco or Berkeley, I've forgotten which. And it was one of those weird places, an office building, office, it was a lot of offices, and it had some strange uh, printed name on it, like, you know, like out of the world mining corporation. I can't remember <laughs> what it would be, but something that was just odd, you know. <laughs> and Bill said he thought, well, this is odd, you know, and then maybe it was some sort of a. Uh, a joke or whatever, you know, so he knocked on the door, come on in, well, I tried, it was the CIA front. Oh. And they asked him, what was her name? And they were going to be in this area. They were traveling down with this tour of near the, where they're doing the atomic test bikini. Mm -hmm. And they asked if he would do reporting for them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I remember, and Bill would tell the story, he was so amazed at what the hell was going on, you know, and he mm -hmm. said, I don't get him, but what would I know? Mm -hmm. Uh who are these people that are just tourists? And what would I know? I wouldn't even know what kind of questions to ask if they were scientists. You know, that was what mm -hmm. they were trying to find out. Huh. No, no. They said, we don't want that. We just want to find out what their general attitude is, yeah. how they feel about it generally. Uh, since you're, first of all, a young couple and you're interested in the art, and there's in the art, and you have this job you're doing there, so you could just throw it in and say, by the way, they're doing a test of Bikini Island here. That's the atomic test, and I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if you guys are responding to what's your attitude about? What do you think about mm -hmm. this? And something casual like that, and he mm -hmm. couldn't believe it. And he said, who are you guys? <laughs> and they said, well, it's a secret. But And he was telling everybody, he was sort of laughing about it when he told the story, but he was also horrified about it, that it was so... Yeah, what year was that, do you think? Boy... He was teaching up here then. Yeah, so that had to be um, after um, 67. Then late the 60s, 60s then. I think he started teaching in Sonoma State about 66. He was teaching up here then. And Mac and I both knew him slightly from the art school days, but really yeah. didn't know him. And I interviewed him. He was him younger, right? period of exploration book that I did. But again, yeah. we, he was uh, a bit younger and kind of a different group than people that we traveled yeah. with, so I didn't really know him. But then he came up here, and he and Walt Coleman were up here, and they were both in the same kind of group, and yeah. we knew mutual friends, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, Bill, that was a... And then Mac, uh, something is funny, he was invited, this was earlier, because uh, um, Grace McCann Morley was still head of the museum then, Mal was invited to have an abstract painting in a show in Brazil. Hmm. I think it was. And it was pulled out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And beyond that, I can't remember the dates or anything. That any was, what, government? Um... Yeah. And that's what, uh, I think hmm. got to be Grace McCann Morley. Hmm. I vaguely, I really don't have the story straight at all. But I remember She would have been the curator then, of the show? Yeah, she was the curator at the Central Museum then. Somehow, oh. I think she was involved in organizing. She was very yeah. interested in uh, South American art and South American uh -huh. painting, as you probably know. And somehow or other, Mac was invited to, and he was absolutely furious about it, and so was she. But 
What did they? Why did they withdraw Max painting? They told her so that he was a radical communist, and they didn't want the huh. rest of the world to feel that we supported or thought they were good oh, uh, in any God, way yeah. at all, in yeah. any way at all. So that that was what. Well, when when they no, were no freedom the, of speech, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we know that. But we know, <laughs> weird. They had the Freedom of Information Act. I I uh, had a friend of mine, an attorney, Susan Brandt, who liked to write and get mine. And it was all blacked out, practically. A couple of interesting things. Yeah. But uh, Mac wouldn't even get his. He wasn't even uh. interested. He said, the hell with him. I don't really give a yeah. what they well, think or say. No way will I even cooperate to that extent. Of, uh, but I did. And it was interesting because what was interesting to me was that after both of us lost our jobs because we refused to sign the loyalty of the loyalty bullshit, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I was living in Berkeley then, and some of you I knew at um, were teaching at Cal. And I remember Walter Horner was German and came to see us at our my place in Point Richmond, and he was really in tears. And mm. he said I shouldn't sign, but I said I, I've got the job, I got to have it. And mm. he said it's what happened in Germany and it's happening here. Mm -hmm. And the only woman, the only person I think in the art department who refused was Karen Peterson. Karen is Margaret Peterson. Margaret Peterson, a Canadian woman. Yeah. Good painter anyway, and she refused to sign it. And and later, uh, years later, they, she was vindicated and they paid her some money or something. But it was, uh -huh. uh, yeah, Margaret Peterson. Yeah, but she was the only one, so she was in the papers a lot. and. I was in the headlines of the Richmond paper for the only person in, yeah. in, in Richmond, teacher who refused to sign the... Huh. It was kind of a... Well, was, I mean, it was a mixture of uh, astonishment and amusement between us, but that's why we moved to Mexico. Yeah. Because it, it seemed to both of us then that the, that fascism was really coming, and of all people, Eisenhower was the one leading it. And it just seemed like there was this sense of, oh, the McCarthy thing was going on. Yeah. There was that thing in San Francisco where people we knew were hosed down the stairs oh, right. and stuff like that, yeah. you know. So it was uh, on the edge of a violent feeling, and there was no opposition to it. Everybody was afraid, I think. Hmm. I think there weren't there weren't protest marches, there weren't support marches. Oh, and then the Rosenberg trial, and uh, yeah. that was horrendous. Yeah. I mean, we had a little committee here in Petaluma. And John Howard Laws, Laws, and one of the Laws, I think one of the Hollywood Ten came up to speak to us, and and he was saying it was really sad. He said, "Just all you can do is just try to stop it. At least let people know that mm -hmm. we're here, and we know it's uh, uh, untrue, and we have reasons to believe that, and we'll just give them our reasons, you know. And even if true, what they could have known was so unimportant that it was ridiculous, you know. And we have scientists, yeah. American scientists, who are willing to testify to that effect. And I knew guys in Berkeley. Well, Oppenheimer was all over Berkeley when I was yeah. there. And he used to go to the communist bookstore with two FBI guys following him. I mean, just really go, <laughs> go to see off because it was so hysterical. And that was kind of our attitude. We were sort of amused by it. But <laughs> it was weird because we, were, we thought it was funny, hysterical, and dumb. <laughs> but also there was a sense that it was very, very dangerous. Very, yeah. very dangerous. And it was yeah. hard for us to... It's like uh, Buchenwald and what happened in Germany. It's it's really mm -hmm. hard even to believe yeah. that that actually... Human yeah. beings actually did that. And that, I know. That the other people allowed it to happen. They didn't uh, yeah. stop it or something. It's, yeah. like, yeah. it's, a, it's hard. Uh, and I think in a certain sense we were kind of in a cultural shock. We didn't... Anyway, so a lot of our friends were leaving and, and going either to uh, Canada or to Mexico or Europe. A lot of people going to Europe. And so uh, we had friends in Guadalajara, and they said, oh, come on down. You can, well, Mac wasn't eligible, but they were on the GI Bill. Uh, hmm. So merchant marine weren't included. So that's how it happened. So I sold the house I had at Point Richmond and went oh. to Mexico for a year. Mm -hmm. And then after a year in Mexico, we decided that no way to make it there. Yeah. We both too, got jobs. Too rough. That, yeah. Oh, I mean, the standard of when the, we met professors who had jobs equivalent to the ones that both of us got, and they were living in in bungalows in Mexico City, half this side with ten, twenty other people. I mean, it was Good really, God. really hard. Wow. And the people that we knew, it were would be in similar circumstances to the mm. ones that I, both of us got jobs so teaching yeah. at universities, but it would barely pay the rent of our, what we mm -hmm. thought would be. And it was pretty minimal. I mean, this hmm. would be 
luxurious compared to what we had in Mexico. Uh, yeah, you came up here in 51, right? Yeah, well, actually, we came up, Andre Margaret, Andre Margaret bought this place, the whole acreage here, 160 acres, and we used to come up with Corbett and all those people that had Reinhardt and everything, there were parties up here. Yeah. So it was kind of a weekend. And Hassel then bought a place over in Sebastopol. That's Hassel Smith. Yeah. yeah. So Mac and I, and Hassel came up a lot, and his kid, and those sort of, and Byron Randall. Von Monroe was in that group. So it was sort of a big uh, art kind of place, you know. Mm -hmm. And then Andre decided to start a, a art uh, commune. <laughs> we we yeah. showed 10 artists, and then you're crazy. You want to live in that crappy place, you know. And like, uh -huh. Well, because Beautiful there, well, place. <laughs> there was a two-lane road with uh, lumber yeah. trucks going down. Yeah. There was nothing up here. I mean, the valley was totally vacant. There was Let's absolutely go. nothing there. Uh, and a friend of mine said, it's going to look like L.A. in 20 years. And I said, oh, bullshit. Well, look at it. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> well, they and are so building you, a casino right out there. That, that's a casino. Yeah. It's got but it is, it's Las not Vegas. L.A. yet, <laughs> even. Well, it's going to be Las Vegas, though. But whatever, <laughs> you know. It's like, but... Uh, but those times were, it's hard to, it was, you know, something I really think that I think about it was that we were all a little on the edge of sort of being hysterical. I think that World yeah. War II, we hadn't really recovered from that in the sense yeah. that the magnitude of it. Yeah. Well, and, and the horror of it. The horror it was, of the camps in Germany and the atom bombs and the other bombings in Tokyo and and. Dresden and Berlin and yeah, I mean just the human destruction of, of civilians by political leaders was just out of you know way, way out of control then it's hard to conceive huh? 27 million Russians yeah, killed yeah. 27 million people I mean it's not, in my generation of women women outnumber the men in the Soviet Union three to one Hmm. Now, you know, now, still, yeah, yeah because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it takes a long time for a yeah. population that's that sort of decimated. And then right. immediately after the war, uh, the United States started the empire building and the Cold War. Well, let's go into that. It was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> we can't when you look at the history of it, <laughs> I'm amazed that we've survived as well as we yeah. have today. The damn sure, I think it's amazing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Did you think you'd be here in in 2013? Yeah, really. That we would have uh, survived as well as we did. That uh, you know, I'm not the only one. A lot of us. We were tough. And I wonder how we. You know, this is a very strong ape. Yeah. <laughs>